Method acting and the Stanislavski method of acting are often confused for the same thing. The confusion is understandable because they're very, very similar, but they're not the same thing at all. You see, Stanislavski has a huge emphasis on recalling, whereas method acting puts its emphasis on becoming. And in fact, method acting is derivative of the Stanislavski method of acting, but it takes it just a little bit further. You see, what method actors are doing are trying to avoid acting at all costs. They're not trying to act like a character, they're trying to become temporarily the character that they're portraying. Now, just to clear up any confusion, I'm gonna break down what Stanislavski method of acting is in three minutes or less. So there are certain things that are associated with the Stanislavski method of acting. The magic if is one of the most important aspects of it. The magic if requires the actor to ask themselves if they were in this situation, how would they react? This stimulates the motivation a bit more so that the actor can actually feel and understand why their character is doing what they're doing. It takes a lot of imagination and a lot of focus. What's also important is text versus subtext. The script could be called the text, meaning what's actually written there, whereas the subtext is what it actually means. For instance, someone saying that I hate you could mean that they hate you, or depending on the context, it could actually mean I love you if it's done playfully by a lover. Similar to that, an important thing is the objective versus the super objective. The objective refers to what the character wants immediately. The super objective refers to what they want overall. For instance, someone could be going after a job. So the super objective would be to get the job, but on their way to getting the job, they may need to buy work appropriate clothing. So their immediate objective would be to buy the clothes. The ultimate goal is to always be working towards the super objective which informs every choice that the character makes. The circle of attention is one thing that is really important for the Stanislavski method of acting. It's also referred to as public solitude. With this, the actor is supposed to be extremely focused on themselves and what they're doing. Now, the circles of intention are not just individual. That's the main circle, the closest circle to the actor, but there are circles outside of that circle. The most immediate circle outside of that circle would be the other actors in the scene. And outside of that may be the camera crew and the director. This is a technique that's extremely difficult, but it's used to make the actor focus on what they're doing. And then you get to tempo and rhythm. Tempo and rhythm are vital parts of movement for the actor. There's rhythm to everything they do, and the tempo can control that. A sad character wouldn't move at the same rhythm or tempo as a happy character. And then we get to what I feel is the most important part of the Stanislavski method of acting, which is emotional memory. Emotional memory asks the actor to recall a time in their life where they felt similar feelings to the character they're portraying. Most of us have felt every feeling that there's possible to be felt at varying degrees. So recalling those feelings allows you to put yourself in the mind state of the character and use that to inform the scene and every decision that's being made. This is what separates method acting from the Stanislavski method of acting. Now, let me explain further using two actors that many people consider to be the greatest of all time. Marlon Brando and Daniel Day-Lewis. How both of these men prepared for films is well documented, but Marlon Brando has scoffed at the idea of being a method actor, although many people confuse him as a method actor. Brando was not trying to be his characters. He was trying to infuse his own personal experiences into that character. Brando was not trying to be Don Corleone. He used everything that he's learned and gathered in life to help build that character. What Daniel Day-Lewis does is tries to immerse himself in that character so that he can temporarily become that character. You see, the goal is the same. An actor's goal is always to find the truth. The difference is how an actor considers the truth. Is the truth putting yourself into the character or is the truth becoming the character? There is a difference between the two and that difference is solely based on the individual. Neither one of these processes of acting are incorrect, which is why I use Brando and Daniel Day-Lewis because they have both put on legendary, amazing performances using two similar but different methods of acting. At the end of the day, the actor is simply searching for the truth.